programmers, this is a video about using the GDB debugger. So if this is not installed on your version of Linux, you might need to install it to be able to follow along. But for me, um, it's already installed. So when I've got a program that has a bug in it, this is a tool I could use to dive in and walk through the program and figure out where the bug occurs. So first let's look at this program, which looks pretty harmless. I have three variables, an age that's an int, an initial that's a char, and miles that are a float. And then I'm gonna ask, how old are you? I'll scan the user typing in at the keyboard and store that in an age variable. I'll ask for the first initial. I'll scan the user typing in at the keyboard and store that into my initial variable. And then I'm going to ask how many miles are in five kilometers. I will scan that into the miles variable and then I'll just print those three things that the user gave me. So it looks harmless enough, doesn't look very buggy, but let's try running it. So I'll just compile it normally with GCC and then I'll do my a dot out. How old are you? I'll put in a, a younger age, 12. And then, huh, didn't stop very long to let me type in my first initial, but I'll type in how many miles are in a 5K and bam, it says your initial is nothing. So why did it do what it did? Well, we could put in print statements or try to debug that way, but I'm gonna debug using GDB. And if you're wondering if you have GDB, you can type in which GDB, and if it shows you the path of where that is, then you're ready to go, otherwise you might need to install it. But I can do, first I need to compile it with a dash G flag, and then I'll do GDB a dot out. And this puts me inside of the debugger and I'll notice that my prompt instead of a dollar sign is now GDB. Now the first command I wanna do is to list out um, the lines of code in my program. I can type list or even L is an abbreviation for list. Since it already listed the first 10, it's gonna to try to list another 10 or until it hits the end of the program, which it does pretty soon. You can also do list followed by a number. If I do like list eight, it'll show me 10 lines of code with eight in the center. So there's some lines before line eight and some lines after. And you need to list out if you want to figure out what line number where things might be going wrong where you want to investigate. So I think something is going wrong in between reading in how old I am and what my first initial is. So I'm going to put in a breakpoint. I'm going to type in break and then let's break at line 10. And then you can also abbreviate that with just B. So I could have said B10 and that would do the same thing. But I'll type out the whole word just because um, I want you guys to know what those short abbreviations might be standing for. Now I'm ready to run the program. I'll run the program and it's going to ask how old I am. I'll type in an age. And then now it has paused and it's paused exactly where I put the breakpoint at line 10 before printing what is your first initial. At this point, I could take a peek at any of the variables that I already have. So I could print out, well, what is the age variable? We just read something into that and that should match what I just typed at the keyboard. And I typed in 20, the age variable matches 20. And now if I want to go to the next line of code, I can type in next and I'm going to type in next again. And hmm, let's take a look at what is in this initial variable because we've moved past the line where supposedly we scanned in from the user typing in at the keyboard. Um, but let's take a look at what that is. So we can either type in print or just say P and then initial and I'll try it with just the P. And I can see, huh, okay, it thinks my initial is the new line character. So I see this a lot with students when they're debugging their programs. If you are scanning in using scanf and you're trying to read in a number followed by a character, well, the enter sign is a character. So that's what it's reading in as your initial. So that's where the error is happening. So I can either keep stepping through the program with next, or if you need to go into a function, you can use s or step to go into a function, but all my code is in main, so there's not going to be a difference between stepping and doing next. Now I can keep going, or I've really kind of determined what the bug is so I can quit. So yep, let's quit this. So there's several different ways we could approach fixing this um, bug. Let me go back into. The problem is that 
we don't want to scan in the very next character because that's the enter sign. Um, here's a little trick. You could, if you just put a space there, it's going to read by any white space, including the enter sign, and wait till we get to the first real character. So I can do, how old are you? I'm getting older and older. And now what's your first initial? And so that's one trick of doing that, is to put the space before the percent C. Let's practice the debugger with one more program. Okay, here's my next program for debugging. I've got an array of characters, which is the user's guess. I'm going to have them try to guess my favorite color, and we'll use fgets, which will read in um, user input that could have spaces in it, unlike scanf, which will stop when it hits a space. So they can read in more than one word there from the keyboard and then we're going to do a string compare with their guess and my real favorite color which is hot pink and while they haven't guessed hot pink we're going to say try again and we'll let them type in another guess and i'll keep track of the number of tries so i actually know there's something wrong with this so i'm going to jump in with the debugger right off the bat so let me compile it with a dash g GCC with a dash G, and then I'll do GDB A dot out and list. And let me put the breakpoint, I'll abbreviate B for break, on line nine, and then I can run it. What's my favorite color? Well, it says in the code hot pink, so why don't I guess hot pink and see what happens? And then I'm gonna see what happens. Looks like it's, it's on this while loop line, and if I go to the next line, huh it's gonna say try again so i guess i didn't get it right let me try it again well i mean i think it's hot pink so why why is this not working i can print the tries variable i can see that's getting higher and higher and as i keep going through and keep guessing well maybe it's a different color maybe it's blue nope it's still not so in the debugger what if we take a look at this guess variable and i'm gonna print guess and we see huh uh, the last thing i guessed was blue and it's saving not only the blue but the backslash n and we can see from when we had guessed hot pink it was also storing that in so let's try going through again and this time i'm going to guess the hot pink and then we'll take a look at that guess variable. So the reason the string compare isn't matching is because hot pink with a new line character is different than hot pink without a new line character. So we're gonna quit out of that, and let me show you my fix for that one, would be instead of using string compare, we could do string compare n, and we could specify how many characters we want to compare. So hot pink um, has, well really, we want to compare the first four, five, six, seven, eight characters. Um, but if guess has less than eight characters, we would we don't we can determine it before that. But at most, eight characters should tell us if we have a match or not. So let's recompile this. And I don't think I need the debugger anymore. I think we've figured it out. So we can just compile it with GCC. What's my favorite color? Well, guess wrong. Blue, green. No. Well, what about hot pink? Better spell it right. And then it says I guessed it in three tries. So sometimes using the debugger really helps to figure out what's going on for those tricky bugs. All right, thanks for watching. Um, hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.